to do. Amen, amen. So everyone is home. Glory to God. Uh, two quick announcements here. Um, Monday, December 24th at 7 p.m., we'll have our Christmas Eve service. Um, yeah, the dress code is white and red. Yeah, yeah, white and red. Amen. <laughs> the brother over there is excited. <laughs> white and red. Now, the following Monday, which will be December 31st, at 9, 9 p.m., we will have our um, New Eve service, as we always do every single year. This is a service you should not miss. You, we usually do testimonies, everything that has happened during the year. Do not miss. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Welcome, everyone. I'm happy to have you here. Um, today, as I said last time, we will continue on the topic of uh, the fervent prayer of Prophet uh, Elijah. Um, and this is in 1 Kings uh, 17, if you can display that. I'm going just to read quickly. Now, Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, they will neither do nor reign in the new few years, except at my word. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, um, just to go back to the history so you understand what we were talking about last time, uh, Elijah appears at a difficult time for Israel. Amen. <laughs> Worship is still going on. <laughs> <laughs> so the king Ahab, if you remember, had married a woman called Jezebel. And both together they have introduced to the nation of Israel a new religion where people were worshipping a pagan god called Baal. Jezebel had killed all the prophets of God, Jehovah, because they were not worshipping Baal. The situation was so bad by the time Elijah appeared. The Bible says in 1 Kings 16, verse 33, Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. So you understand how this situation was very, very difficult. God could not take it anymore. Before the Hebrews entered the promised land, coming from slavery in Egypt, the Lord God warned them against worshiping the Canaanites' God. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 14 to 15, don't have anything to do with the gods that are worshipped by the nations around you. I am saving you. I am coming, I am removing you from slavery. You will cross the Red Sea. I will part it in two. You will make it in, into the promised land. But the people over there, even though the, the, the city is beautiful, are worshiping demons. Do not do what they're doing. You will live among them, but do not copy them. Brothers and sisters, you may live among people who are doing something that not, that not please God. But the word of God this morning is saying, do not do what they do. Hallelujah. The children of Israel started pleasing both. On one hand, they will do what God wants. On the other hand, they will do what Baal wanted. They ended up doing what Baal wanted. Their king, Ahab, married Jezebel, who was from that tribe over there, worshipping a demon. Hallelujah. So very quickly here, who is uh, Elijah? Last time I told you that we did not know who Elijah was. Uh, he appeared uh, like that um, just be at that moment. Um, the, the Bible does not tell us really who he was. But 
James chapter 5, verse 17 says, Elijah was a man just like us. Can someone say, Elijah, Elijah was a man like us. There is no difference from him to you. Hallelujah. The Bible is very precise. When the Bible says something with details, it has significance to us. He said, the Bible says, he prayed earnestly that it will not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and a half. One word from a man like you declared, until I say so, there will not be any rain. Because you guys are worshiping demons, and that does not please my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This was bad for Baal. This was really bad for Ahab, Jezebel, and all the other people who were worshiping whatever. Hallelujah. Because Baal was known to be a god of rain. He was the rain maker. <laughs> you, at that time, they were worshiping him. They were sacrificing things. It was just terrible. So these people did not need really to do much to see rain. So they needed to just to bow down to Baal and then boom. Hallelujah. When you say rain, you say fertility. You say food. You say everything provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we just learned that Elijah made a declaration. My point this morning is if Elijah was a regular man like you and me, just a regular person, how come he was able to resist how come he was able to fight back and others were not able to? Hallelujah. That preoccupied me since last week. The first book of the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 19 says, Do not quench the Spirit of God. Can someone repeat that? Do not quench the Spirit of God. Do not extinguish the fire in God that the, the fire of God that is in you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Definitely Elijah did not quench the spirit of God in him. His boldness is coming from there. God has granted us the ability either to restrict or to release what the spirit does in our life. Brothers and sisters, hey, we are powerful there is power in us. The Bible says, do not extinguish the power of God that is in you. What you say, what you proclaim, what you believe in, can release the power of God that is in you to do the purpose of God, or can quench it, can extinguish it. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray this morning that you become aware of the power of God that is in you. Hallelujah. God's power surpasses everything. Oh, hallelujah. God's power surpasses everything. Remember, God spoke the universe into existence. Hallelujah. God raised Lazarus from death. How many believe that? How many know that? The power of God parted the Red Sea for the children of Israel we're talking about to be able to, to cross and to go into the promised land. Hallelujah. Amen. That power is in you. And Elijah was aware of it. He was aware that the power of God was in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah, a man like you, a man like me, opened his mouth and made a declaration. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray that you recover your voice this morning. May I hear some people who are willing to recover their voices. Amen. Recover your voice and declare the goodness of our Lord. Recover your voice, brothers and sisters. The power of the Lord is in you. Hallelujah. Declare that the Lord, he is God. Hallelujah. Recover your voice and declare that you'll bear fruit in every good work. How many people believe they can... How many people? One person, two... Three, 
Everyone, hallelujah, prende se que asa. Believe that, hallelujah, while others perish by lack of knowledge. You will increase in the knowledge, in the knowledge of who our God is, hallelujah. The power of God is in you, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. As I said in the past, prophets of Baal did very little to get results. Hallelujah. And that was before God manifested himself. In the past, Baal and his demons tormented everyone. Everyone around. That's the reason they did not resist. They started to do what Baal needed, wanted to do. We are not really far from that time, brothers and sisters. I'm not talking about Baal of the Old Testament. Hallelujah. What was happening back there is happening here today. At that time, kids were now obeying their parents. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Politicians were crooked, were liars. They were stealing from people. They were selfish. They will serve their own interest and interest of their families, but not interest of the people. Hallelujah. Morality was low, very low. Hallelujah. Husbands were cheaters. Husbands were cheaters. And the wives too. Mm -hmm. There was chaos everywhere. Drugs and sexual immorality. People were lost. People were depressed. Hallelujah. That was that time. But unfortunately, this morning I'm saying it is still the same. Some people are still worshiping Baal in a different form. Hallelujah. But it just takes a man or a woman who is willing to be used by God to declare that enough is enough, to declare that the Lord is God. Oh, hallelujah. A prophet Elijah said, you choose Jezebel's way or you choose God's way. Hallelujah. When he declared that, no one said anything. They did not know who to, what to do. And then miracles started happening, and then they declared that the Lord is God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do you want to get to that point where we'll be challenged until you declare in your life that the Lord is God? Brothers and sisters, this is not a story. This is to empower you to take over your destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. You either choose Jezebel's way or you choose God's way. It takes a man or a woman who is serious with God to make a declaration that will silence the enemy. You can silence the enemy in your house. You can silence the enemy in you, hallelujah. Yeah. I pray that we'll be bold enough to make one declaration that will make your enemy powerless. Yes. What is bugging you this morning? Jesus. You have the power to make your enemy powerless. Like in, in the Deuteronomy chapter 28, 11. I pray that the Lord causes your enemy who rise against you, against your church, against your family, against your business, against your health, to be defeated before your own face. That is what the Bible says. Oh, hallelujah. If they come against you one way, I pray in the name of Jesus, they will flee before you Seven ways. Can someone say seven ways? Seven ways. Oh, seven ways. seven ways. I pray that they will flee. Yes. Seven ways. Amen. They will run to save their own life. Yes. I pray that your enemies will run to save their own lives. Hallelujah. You will chase them regardless of how many they are. You will chase them. You will catch them. And you will defeat them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says... Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall chase ten thousand. Your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. Hallelujah. Just say, my enemies will fall before me. Hallelujah. Name your enemy and say, you are going to fall before me. It's just a matter of time because I believe the word of God. You are going to fall. Hallelujah. I declare according to the word of God, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. 
and every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. You. That's what the Bible says. I say, you. Uh -huh. That thing that is bugging you, that enemy, you shall condemn. I can help you do that. But you have to be bold enough to say, you're coming down. You're going to flee seven ways. Hallelujah. Seven ways. You will flee to save your own life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I declare according to the word that every weapon formed against your family should not prosper. Amen. Against your kids or your business should not prosper. Amen. Hallelujah. If you allow me, I will move to verse 2 of chapter 17 of First King. The Lord told Elijah to go down to the brook Cherith east of the Jordan, where he could drink of the brook, and the ravens will bring him food. That's what the Lord had said. Elijah had made a declaration. Baal, Ahab, and the entire people, everyone, they are upset. There is no rain, there is no food. It's chaos. God says, go hide. Okay? Take the key, just go. And then God told him specifically where to go. Hallelujah. There is so much. We can talk about this for months and months and months. Until you get it and until you change. Until you start making declarations. Brothers and sisters, ravens will bring you food. Okay, allow me to teach a little bit. Ravens are large black birds. I grew up seeing them all over the place. During winter, you don't see them here. But during other seasons, you can see ravens here. I saw them all my entire life. They are known to be sca uh, scavengers. They eat the flesh of dead animals. They sometimes kill small birds and other animals like rabbits and rats. They are always looking for food. There is a word that describes a person who is hungry that will eat anything. Such person is said to be ravenous. It's coming from this thing. Hallelujah. Amen. So ravens are dangerous. They are not reliable at all. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> ravens are dangerous and are not reliable. Genesis chapter 8, verse 6 to 7 says that when the flood waters began to recede, Noah sent out a raven in search for a dry land. Although the, the earth was still covered with water. Are you following me? Yes. You remember the story of Noah and the ark and the flood. So when it was quiet, Noah wanted to know if uh, uh, it was still full of water everywhere, if there was any land to be seen. He asked the, rev the raven to go check. How many ravens were there? Thank you. Two, only two. So he asked the male, go check. Although the earth was still covered with water, the male raven did not come back. Hmm? Why? Where was the raven? There were bodies all over the place. People were dead. So ravens was busy eating. You understand? This means that a raven does not come to the same place twice. He goes where there is food. The raven does not keep coming back where? In that thing? Why? I have food here. Amen? What drives ravens is food and themselves, to satisfy themselves. So because the raven did not return, now Noah was stuck. What do I do? 
Noah was obliged to send a dove. Okay. You, you go, okay, and you check for me and you come back, okay? So the dove returned with a leaf to prove that the water was rescinding. Do you understand the difference between a dove and a raven? But God, almighty God, picks the most irrational, unreliable, <laughs> unlikely bird to help. Amen? Amen? Remember that the Lord has said King Ahab was the one who did the, the worst among all the kings that Israel had. He sent one man to provoke him, and he sent a raven to feed that man, a bird that is irrational, a bird that you cannot rely on. Hallelujah. No science. Nobody can explain how a raven for more than a year will come to the same place to feed a person twice a day. Not just one time, but twice a day. Contrary to what we know about this animal. Hallelujah. Under no circumstances will they bring food to a man. Much less do it twice a day. Hallelujah. God is powerful. Ravens, as I said, normally cares for themselves, not other people. Instead of stealing a largest food, which I could expect, the ravens delivered faithfully the food. This was a, a delivery service. Hmm? Skip the dishes service. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just order, you stay in your home, it's snowing outside. And then someone rings at the door with your food. That is what the raven has done. Elijah was having a good time somewhere. Not worrying about anything. Hallelujah. God is powerful. Ravens are rejected by everyone, everywhere, in all cultures. Hallelujah. Have you ever heard a culture that eats ravens? Eh? So far, people eat everything. <laughs> Even dogs. Hmm? Even snacks. Okay? Maybe some people are hungry now that I'm talking about these things. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> but not about ravens. Hallelujah. <laughs> you might be rejected by men, but not by God. Hallelujah. That is the lesson we have to understand. Man rejected ravens, but God did not reject ravens. Hallelujah. In the world, you have people who are rejected, who are discriminated for any reason. There is no reason to reject a human being. There is no reason to reject another person. But in the world... As I'm talking today, even tomorrow and in 10 years, there will always be people who will be rejected, who will be discriminated. Some people in Japan think they are the top, the top of the top of all the Asians people. For them, the other Asians are lesser, lesser people. You go to India, same thing. You have different castes. Hmm? You cannot buy this, you cannot access to this because you are a lesser person. Am I right? Am I right, Minister Mercy? She knows she's from India. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't think it's only Asia. Even here in America. Oh, yeah. I was expecting everyone to be quiet. <laughs> Some people are rejected because you're First Nation, because whatever. They reject you. Hallelujah. One thing we have to understand, as I said it before, Jesus was not white. Okay? He was not. He was from a tribe. He was brown, dark brown, okay. <laughs> he was from a tribe. They were brown, but they were dark. Brothers and sisters, I would like to say here, in him you find all the colors. White people identify themselves in Jesus. Black people identify themselves in Jesus. 
They rejected Rohingya people from Bangladesh. You know the stories, hallelujah. Could identify themselves in Jesus. Hallelujah. Same people, same thing for the people who are cast, cast out in India. Hallelujah. Because you are low cast, don't worry. You can identify yourself in Jesus. Some, same thing for the Hutus and the Tutsis in Africa. Same thing for the First Nations people here in North America. Hallelujah. We can all identify ourselves in Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is our common denominator. Hallelujah. What do we learn about this story? That was just to summarize everything we have learned. But what do we learn about the story of Elijah and the ravens? First, God commanded and the ravens came. Mm -hmm. A man tried to command the raven. The raven went but did not come back. Hallelujah. But God commanded the raven for more than a year, maybe a year and a half, the raven went to look for food, and this was not dead body food. God will not feed you with dead body kind of food. Eh? I, I guess that the king Ahab was still king, am I right? And Jezebel and whatever. Maybe the raven was going in their house, steal their food, because ravens are very good. Eh? When we talk about stealing, very good. And then bring a first class meal to the prophets. Hallelujah. So God commanded, and the ravens came. In 1 Kings uh, ch chapter 17, verse 4, it says, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. One time, down the road, I will preach on there. What I can say here is, there is a place, a specific place, where your blessings are waiting for you. Yes. The prophet Elijah could have stayed the place he was, or go to another brook. I suppose this place had many brooks. I suppose. Instead of going to the Cherif brook, if he would have been going to another brook, which is not there, where his blessing was waiting for him, he could not have been fed. Brothers and sisters, one day we'll talk about there is not a topic today. Hallelujah. The second point here is God did not allow Elijah to bring provisions. <laughs> he could have said, okay, now that is not raining anymore. <laughs> Pretty soon there won't be any food. But because I'm sending you somewhere, you know, take some food with you. Because I, I don't know how long you're going to be there. God did not allow him to take provisions. God said, you just go and go right now. Hallelujah. And he sent the ravens to Elijah twice a day. In the morning and again in the evening. The ravens didn't bring enough on Monday to last the whole week. Every detail is important. They brought enough in the morning to last the day. And enough in the night to last the night to keep him nourished during the night. Just enough and nothing more. Hallelujah. This, God, or this guy was fed properly. He was not overeating. He was not fat. Hallelujah. <laughs> when God feeds you, there is no way you can become fat. We become fat, why? Because food is right there. You eat by the time you're done, you're thinking about eating again. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, the guy, Elijah, Elijah, um, the prophet Elijah, was fed once in the morning and once in the evening. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone here? Yes. Uh -huh. He was not feeding himself in between. <laughs> not, nothing in between. Hallelujah. No snacks, no snacks. Mm -mm. Bread, normal bread, okay? And meat. Praise God for the meat. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. 
Hallelujah. So they brought enough for the morning and enough for the night. And the third one, God did not ask Elijah his permission before he sent the the ravens. We have described what the ravens are, right? I am pretty sure Elijah may have considered, he, he could not consider being fed by ravens because for himself, ravens were enemies. If you cook outside and you go in the house, when you come back, you're going to have to cook again <laughs> because the ravens will take your food. Cooked or not, it's gone. You, you understand? Even if they are not hungry, they will steal your food anyways. Elijah may have considered ravens to be enemies, but God has the power over your enemies. Amen. This is important. This is so rich. You, the people you are considering being your enemies, maybe God has a completely different view about them. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that God use your enemies to supply you. Uh Your enemies will supply you. I pray that God use your enemies to serve you. To serve you, hallelujah. To care about you, hallelujah. In the meantime, Ahab has been searching, searching for Elijah everywhere. But Elijah was nowhere to be seen. He wanted Elijah's head on the platter. He wanted to kill him. But God had instructed him to hide. To the brook. Cherith, or Cherith, whatever you pronounce it, means a place of isolation. God did not send the guy anywhere, just, just go there in the bush, no. He sent him to a place, and that place is called Cherith, and, and that name means isolation. So Elijah was completed isolated. He was totally dependent on God for everything. We know that there was water there. But if you study, you will understand that there was no vegetation. There was nothing. It was rocks. So the water was going through rocks. So Nothing could grow there. He was just there to take the water and eat whatever the birds were bringing him. Hallelujah. In order to be successful against Jezebel, he needed to be isolated. God needed to train him. That's the reason he sent him to a place called isolation. Hallelujah. This kind of training only happens in isolation with God. Amen. You cannot just decide, oh, I'm, I would like to isolate myself. Uh, oh, it's like people, oh, I want to I, I, I um, fast. Okay, well, you, you have to have a purpose. You have to be praying. Otherwise, you will be hungry with, within minutes. Amen? If you have a purpose and you're praying, you can fast for days. Amen? I told you my story. For eight months, I was in isolation. For me, it was a a time of training. Training to know God. Training for God to talk to you. Training to 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 be broken. To be shaped. And after that, you can now close the eyes of your enemies. Hallelujah. Joseph went from the pit to the palace. How come? Because he was trained in the pit to be less of himself and full of God. Remember that the presence of God is full in us. But we can quench it or we can release it to produce what God wants to be produced by us. Hallelujah. So do not ask to cast demons out of you when God is closing some doors. God is trying to isolate you. It has nothing to do with demons. Okay? Don't rebuke demons. Sometimes there is no demons. God is closing some doors because God wants to isolate you. Amen. This influence is not good. This other influence is not good. God closes it. It could be your best friends. It could be your fiancé. It could be whatever. But this door here 
has to be closed. Because if it's not closed, you're going down. You and this uh, good-looking uh, guy, you're going down. Hallelujah. Some door closed are good, very good, but you don't know it. Uh, it's painful. You're going to cry. You will moon and whatever, but it's good for you down the road. God does not reveal always everything. Hallelujah. There was a reason to isolate David, Moses, and even the children of Israel for 40 years. 40 years. How long have you been isolated? eh? 40 years in the desert, going around, isolation, nothing. I'm going to feed you, don't worry. God took care of them for 40 years in order for them now to get into the promised land. Because if you get there, rebellious as you are, it's not going to be good. Hallelujah. Jesus himself needed isolation. Remember that. Cherith does not mean isolation only. (laughs) It means cut off. Cut off from the world. Cut off from things that control you, that control us. If you have a high calling in your life, you will experience definitely some cherished moments. Definitely for sure. God needs to train you. God needs to shape you. God needs to talk to you. But if everything is noisy around you, you will never hear the voice of God. You need to turn off some stuff. And the best way is to isolate you. Amen? Cut off. Cut off. Hallelujah. During that time of isolation, do not be afraid. Do not worry. We just learned that the prophet Elijah Elijah was hidden somewhere, was isolated, but he was fed every single day for months and months and months. So do not be afraid. Do not worry. If God is Closing some doors. Maybe your, your hope was this job. Really, you were happy when you got the job. I got an interview. Hey. <laughs> and then they don't call you. <laughs> oh, they send you a letter, we regret. <laughs> you regret what? <laughs> I haven't even worked here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but I'm saying this morning, do not be afraid. Do not worry. God has a plan. Hallelujah. God will always protect you from your enemies that your eyes cannot see. Elijah did not see his enemies. He was a place where he could not hear, no TV, nothing. Okay? No, no signal, nothing. The cell phone was not working. So he did not know who the enemies were, where they were coming from, whatever. And then that was the moment God took care of them. I'm praying that some people who went through hell understand that sometimes what you call hell is necessary. Do you understand it? I don't know. Is it painful? Definitely, probably, certainly. I am first to know what I'm talking about. You wonder what is going on. How come? But if you look your life back, you say, ah, this guy was a serpent. <laughs> eh? I was about to eat this fruit. But you did not know. Because when the serpent seduced, the, the serpent looked beautiful, walked beautiful, spoke wonderfully. And that's how Eve fell. Hallelujah. Amen. But now we know. But back then, she did not know the fruit was yummy. Eh? And um, the guy, Adam, he, he, he's like a raven. He was just, I, I want to eat this thing. That's it. But now we know. Back then, they did not know. Hallelujah. You may be in a pit right now, and nothing is going on. I pray that this is not just a pit. I pray that this is not just an attack. 
I pray that the pit you are in turns out to be the Brook Sharif. Turns out to be a moment of isolation with God. Turns out to be something God wanted. He purposely put you in that pit so that he trains you, he formed you, so you become stronger. It could be a business that is going down and down and down. I pray that this be a moment of isolation so that you can back up to be able to jump and run faster. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. This is very seriously because many of us are going through hell. Hell, financially, oh my goodness. Hell, your health is deteriorating, but you don't know what's going on. You think the devil is attacking me or whatever. Possible. That's the reason my prayer, if God turn this moment into a brook cherith moment where you will communicate with your, your daughter, we will communicate with your son. Use this for, your, for you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What do we learn about the brook uh, cherries? First, we must learn to wait and depend on the Lord. And this is very difficult. You have to be in constant prayer to understand that this is what the Lord wants. And then I have to wait and I have to depend on him. Second, God's plan in your life is rarely revealed in advance. You will go through a problem where you are deep in the problem. That's where you say, hmm, maybe God is talking to me. Must, must, be, must be God talking to me here. Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah had no idea of where God will lead him next. He will tell, go there. Go there. He had no idea. But let me tell you, you do not know either. <laughs> do you think you control anything? You don't. Yes, you have a job today. Tomorrow morning you wake up, go to the job, and get your money and stuff. Okay, that's how far you can control. <laughs> Hallelujah. But so many people tomorrow morning, they're not going to wake up. Mm -hmm. You, you will. I pray you will. Hallelujah. Amen. But so many people will not. The truth is, we don't control anything. We just have to say, God, all is in your hands. If you ask me to go left, I will go left. If it turns out left was not good, I will listen to you. You will direct me again. God is in control. We, Elijah did not know where God will take him next. So do we. We don't know. Hallelujah. And the last thing. Prepare for sudden changes. Prepare. Just when I just thought life was good, God changed again. There will be changes. For me, those changes are switches, are adjustments, are realignment. Because God knows the good picture. God has the big picture. Uh -huh. So a change, take it positively and say, God, Thank you for this realignment. I would like maybe to understand more, but I'm pretty sure you are shifting me. You are realigning me. Hallelujah. Amen. The fourth lesson regarding this brook, God has appointed the beginning and the end of every season. So we do not control anything. But God is in control. He has appointed the beginning and has appointed the end. How do you see that? First King chapter 17, verse 7 says, Sometime later, the brook dried up. This brook that was giving this guy water dried up. The raven is able to steal food, but not to steal water. Am I right? And then the brook dried up. It was not by chance and it was not by surprise. It was designed that way. Yeah. The Hebrew translations um, um, of um, <clears throat> sometime later, the translation uh, says at the end of days. That means 
as appointed by God. You will say, oh, science can explain that. Science is very good. So it hasn't been raining for so long, and then there is no water anymore. Let me tell you, <laughs> God has appointed the end. And then when that end happened, it ended. Hallelujah. That is what happened. The water ran as long as God decreed, and on the day he decreed, the brook began to dry. Hallelujah. So our God is suffering. Our God is powerful. All creation must answer to him. Everything has to answer to him. When he say, I need water, water will come. And when he says there is no more water, it will dry up. Every drop of water that, fall, that falls on this earth comes from his hand. Hallelujah. So the same God who sent the rain also sent the drought. Remember the three years and a half of drought. So the same God who sent the rain is the same who sent the drought. He is the same who called Elijah to confront Ahab. But he is also the same who sent Elijah to go hide. The same God who sent the ravens had something else for Elijah. He said, Elijah, now that there is no water, stand up and go to this widow, Zarephath widow. Okay? I understand why God turned off the tab. As long as Elijah had water, he was expecting that food will come. He wouldn't probably leave. He would say, oh, I'm okay here. Because on the other side, Ahab is waiting for me. I better stay here. So God turned off the tab, no water anymore. Elijah had no choice. Doesn't matter how long you are in isolation. <laughs> you still have your head and you're still thinking like a human. So no water, go. And then go where? A place where every, there is chaos. People are hungry. The same God who sent you all the way from Africa, all the way from Juba to Calgary, all the way from Lagos, from Saskatoon, okay, from Montreal. Yes, I am saying to you this morning that God is still in control. Don't think you, you got here by your own. Eh? You, was, you, you were probably walking and you think it's by your own. No, that same God who took you from Juba is the same God today and is the same God who is still in control. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The same God. The same God has your business in, in their hand. The same God controls your health. The same God. The same God, and he's a God that is powerful. I would like to say that that God is still alive today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He calls your business a gap, a cross cornerstone um, from daycare to be alive. Amen. That same God is still in control. Amen. The same God who, who caused Bay West to exist, the same God is in control today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is powerful. Amen. That God sent Elijah to Zarephath, a widow. This is a person who is, first of all, a widow, which means she was alone, and then she had a child, even. She was alone. Uh, there is no work, there is no food, there is no rent. She has no money, she has no food. And then here comes now a test. How many of us are tested at, at, at the wrong time? I mean, a wrong time. Hmm? January 27th, first fruit offering. Amen. Ah, Amen. There is no other wrong time than January 27th. Let me tell you, it's a test. <laughs> uh -huh. It's a test. <laughs> I'm just provoking you guys. <laughs> it is a test. 
but she had at least one meal. Okay? She's saying, maybe my neighbor will die today, but I will live until tomorrow. And then here comes the prophet Elijah says, okay, oh, hold on a second. Um, give me some food. She must say, this guy is crazy. I don't have any food. That's all that I have that is left. Give me the food. I am pretty sure if the same thing happens to you today, your last meal, your last penny, you will say, away from me, Satan. <laughs> away. You will rebuke the Satan out of the past. Uh, that's my last penny that is left. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I am pretty sure you, if you were the widow, you would have said the same thing. Hallelujah. I'm talking about me. <laughs> but this widow chose to share and die. I am going to, because the prophet was not going to eat everything, right? He said, give me some. So she was going to share and she was going to die. What would you have done? Let's be honest. We live a time where people are extremely selfish. Things must go my way. It's my way or nothing. People are offended for, some, for whatever. That's the time we live. How would you act now? This is a lesson for every one of us. I see even at work, you say just one word to a person, wow, <laughs> wow, it's like a bomb, boom. It's okay, what's going on here? I know they say this, they say this, that means you know, no, it does not, brothers and sisters. This is a lesson for us. Because that thing you think you're holding on, first of all, it does not belong to you. The proof is God can take it at any time he wants. This widow was holding on that little oil and flour tight. And that is something God says, I need some. And she was wise, and I'm asking you to be wise. She shared, and she prepared herself to die. This is the lesson of Christ. By acting in faith, she made a cake for Elijah. She made a cake for her. She made a cake for her son. She made all the food she wanted because the flour and the oil did not run out. I say the flour and the oil did not run out. Oh, I, uh, hallelujah. I pray that those who are here and are not selfish, I pray that you, and I pray also for those who give freely, that your oil and your flour, the flour will not run out. Will not run out in your house. Hallelujah. Will not run out. Do I have some people who will say, I want my flour not to run out? It's not only monetary, it's everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. You are honest. You stick on the word of God. You are not selfish. I pray that your flour and your oil will not run out. Hallelujah. Yeah. I pray for those who are generous. And we have many here. I pray that God remembers you. And I pray that God pays you back. Yeah. Hallelujah. I pray that God pays you back. Hallelujah. Although she was single, a mother, single mother and her hope of survival was almost uh, gone because no food, nothing, she was still willing to help and she was still willing to meet Elijah's needs. Despite her limited resources, she served. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. She didn't let her lack of resources her lack of money, her singleness, everything you can imagine, stop her from fulfilling her destiny. By sharing what she had, she fulfilled her destiny. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me thank one person here who comes every single week from down south, regardless of the weather. It could be hot, it could be snowing crazy like today, that person will come here every Saturday to have this man who cleaned the, the, the sanctuary. 
Sometimes I will be in the office working early in the morning on Saturday. And then I see someone cleaning the windows. Sometimes I say, these windows actually, are not, you clean them last week and then you clean them with outside, not inside, outside. Hallelujah. That's the faithfulness. I pray that God remembers you, remembers the service you do. She takes the bus. She does not have it. She does not drive, but she does not get late here on Tuesday, not late here to clean, not late here on Sunday. God will remember you, will remember your faithfulness, and remember your service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where do you feel like you have a limitation? All your resources are limited. Hmm? Are you allowing those limitations? I don't have a transportation and man are going to church. Are you allowing those limitations to stop you from serving others? The widow was very limited, was very poor, but her limitation did not stop her to serve. Hallelujah. Some will pull out the, the, you know, the victim card. You know, you know, I'm a widow, I have nothing, and I'm a single parent, I even have no car. How can you ask me that? Brothers and sisters, this, okay, let me tell you, 2018 has been declared the year of grace, revolution. I believe the word. Faithfully, I have preached from January 1st to now what the word says. Faithfully, I encourage everyone. Faithfully, I have been doing that. I believe that miracles have been done and we still have I'm waiting for other miracles to come. I want everyone to be empowered and to understand that in you, you have the power to move mountains. Hallelujah. Like we're singing today this morning, God has never failed anybody. Has never failed me. I I don't know about you, but me, he has never failed me. I have never seen a person that God has failed. Hallelujah. You still have the power in you to move mountains. So forget about your limitations. Amen. Hallelujah. No one was more limited than the widow of Zarephath. She was very limited, but she moved mountains. God liked people like that. When there is a test, brothers and sisters, pass the test. Amen. If you want to fulfill your destiny, pass the test. It's just a test. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are faithful, I pray that God remembers your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Let me tell you a story, uh, a true story that I learned yesterday. I went to visit um, a wonderful family, Um, a fantastic couple that uh, I met um, and that is here in the church today. I went to visit them, and we were talking, and then uh, we got to talking about testimonies. And the lady said, one day the husband was here, and then she was waiting for documents and stuff to join the husband. And then she was back home with a child, like the widow of Zarephath. And she did not have any money. She called her husband saying, okay, you, you got to send us money. But the system, the transfer money system was not working. She did not know people to help her. She could not ask anybody. But she had some flour, <laughs> flour at home. <laughs> I remember because of the story. She had flour, but she did not have anything else. Absolutely nothing. You cannot just eat flour, <laughs> flour by yourself. She needed something else to be able to make food for the child that day. And she did not have. And it was time to go to church. Guess what she did? She went to church. I'm pretty sure she walked because she did not have any money. On her way back home, it was in the evening. It was getting dark. She did not know what to do. Maybe she can resist. But what about the child? So her mind was not functioning properly just because of that. And on the way home, the child saw a big mushroom coming out of the ground somewhere. 
This was not a season for mushrooms. And then there was a, a mushroom. And then the child said, mommy, mushroom. She looked around. She said, it's not possible. It's like the middle of summer. And you're talking, oh, mommy, mommy, snow. You understand? <laughs> she took the mushroom. She went home and she cooked the mushroom. And then they had food for that night. Wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we do not tell stories just to tell stories. This story touched my heart. And I'm here to proclaim that God will bless you even out of season. Yeah. It's not a season for mushroom, but I pray that God brings provision for you. Yeah. You cannot limit God. It's not a season to be blessed, but out of season, God will bless you. God will see your faithfulness. God will remember you, and God will bless you. Hallelujah. That person is here today. If you are with me today, I would like you to stand up. We're going to close our eyes as I'm finishing. Just focus on everything we have said, focusing on all the lessons we, ran, we, we learned from Ravens to, to the Brook Cherries to everything. I would like to say that Ravens did not come by chance. God sent them. God commanded them. God directed them. Brothers and sisters, God knows your name. God knows where you live. He knows your address. He knows your needs today and tomorrow. He knows what you want. Your needs are written on God's heart. Even when you think that God has forgotten you, your cries, your needs are printed on his heart. God knows your need. God knows what you need. And God knows when you need it. I pray that he makes sure that you get on time. Before the oil and the flour runs out, I pray that a miracle happens. As he sent the ravens to Elijah, as he commanded all heaven to come to Elijah's heart, uh, help, I pray that he commanded everything in his power to come to your help. I pray that God blesses you with the blessing of the endless flower. Not any kind of blessing. The blessing of the endless flower. I pray that as you are faithful and obey his command, oil and flour never run out in your house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray that every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, be removed from your mind, be removed from your home in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I stand right now against the spirit of Jezebel. Every spirit that attacks the church, every spirit that attacks your family, attacks you, attacks your well-being, attacks your business, attacks your health. I destroy it by the blood of Jesus. I defeat it in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I proclaim the victory. I proclaim victory. I proclaim victory in your house, in your business. I proclaim victory. It doesn't matter how many enemies are coming against you. I, I'm saying they will flee. They will run away. Different ways. All possible ways. I declare victory. Oh, hallelujah. I pray that God gives you boldness to be able to stand and to proclaim something in your life. To proclaim. To proclaim hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for that boldness for you to be able to open your mouth and say, Satan, out of here. 
sitting away from a house, away from my job, away from my life, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, sir. In the name of Jesus, sir. Hallelujah. How many of you received today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next time we will continue and finish, if possible, on Elijah. So do not miss the next service because this will change and transform you. Hallelujah. I am confident and I can see in my spirit that people are walking out of here, their hair up, very bold, and they are going to take control of their lives. Hallelujah. If you are here and you feel that you need to reconnect with Jesus, if you're here and you think there is a distance between you and Jesus, if you think that where Jesus is sending you, you do not want to go because that's not where you believe your blessings are, I'm asking you to come in the front. If you're here and you never confess Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, Everything we're doing is in the name of Jesus. If you never confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior, come as well here in the front. So we'll pray for you. This is a personal decision. No one will push you to do that. You may think I'm a Christian, but if you never confess, come here in front. Do not be afraid. God is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Worship team. Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. Thank you.